Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. I'm ABC's M1 in Washington. The status of the most commonly used abortion pill is cast into uncertainty. How the Biden administration is stepping in. Coming up. And outside with live cam this morning, 61 degrees at San Antonio International Airport. And Mike Osterhage is back as we jump back into a work week after Easter weekend. Good morning, everybody. It's Monday, the 10th of April. Thanks for joining us. Hope you had a nice Easter weekend. I want to say that the weather worked out. It did. It really did turn out overall. And Mike Osterhage is here. We missed you last week. Happy belated Easter. Didn't Thank see you. you yesterday. Welcome back. Well. It was getting a little on the human side in the afternoon. It was. Now, granted, I was out in the backyard working, so that didn't uh. help matters much. But uh, yeah, overall, it's very pleasant. Didn't have a whole bunch of, in the way of sunshine. We're not going to see a lot today and as a matter of fact we do have a couple of showers out there as of right now here is what's showing up on radar and it's not a lot I've actually I saw just some broken clouds and a little bit of the moon earlier this morning maybe a couple of little sprinkles down here along the uh, the coastal plain and then just one or two of these light little showers here in portions of Medina County near Medina Lake right around Hondo out in parts of uh, say Bandera County heading out 10 you may run into a couple of sprinkles there could be a few buried right in here in some of this uh, clutter that shows up and then a couple of more further on out to the west western Bandera County over there toward uh, Real and then further on out to the west we actually have a couple of uh, lightning strikes that are being detected right now so a couple of showers maybe a thunderstorm or two that's going to be possible not only this morning as these move into the hill country, but also later on this afternoon. Not anything off the charts. It's just going to be one or two of those stray showers or a storm. Temperatures are actually on the warm side, although it is kind of a, a dampish cool out there. Grab a light jacket and obviously you're going to need it because of some of the rain, but uh, mid upper 50s, low 60s. We are slightly above normal and we do have plenty of humidity. It's not like we're way above 60, but just enough to, to sort of notice it when you step outside and mold it and oak are both on the high side. As far as this morning, heading off to school again, grab a, a light jacket. Uh, temperatures are going to be staying fairly steady. A couple of showers, maybe a storm here or there, just kind of scattered about one or two of them. That's going to be the situation this afternoon. 74 for a high temperature, so it will actually be slightly below normal. Plenty of clouds, obviously, with one or two of those scattered showers or a storm. Nothing really extreme this week, close to normal temperatures. Then we'll talk about the upcoming weekend. That's in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Thank you, Mike. Top story this morning. Three men are facing charges after New Braunfels police found more than $260,000 in cash, guns, and 11 pounds of marijuana. 24-year-old Aaron Dittman, junior, 26-year-old Jonathan Martinez, and 25-year-old Eduardo Munoz all facing possession of marijuana and engaging in organized criminal activity charges. Witnesses told police they were acting suspicious and that the money and guns could be seen in plain sight. Police were called and searched their vehicle, leading to that discovery. All three men are from the Fort Worth area. Other stories we're following this morning. The Biden administration is fighting a federal judge's ruling here in Texas to suspend the FDA's approval of one of the most commonly used drugs to end a pregnancy. The decision could have major implications for abortion access throughout the country and another case in Washington state is getting a lot of attention. As ABC's M. Wynn reports, it could lead to a lengthy legal battle. This morning, dueling opinions from two federal judges casting the status of a key abortion medication into uncertainty. In Texas, U.S. District Judge Matthew Kaczmarek ruled to suspend the FDA approval of Mifepristone, a pill used in more than half the abortions in the U.S. Kaczmarek indicated the FDA had ignored certain risks in approving the drug 23 years ago. The anti-abortion group that filed the lawsuit telling ABC News... We're happy to obtain that preliminary ruling from the district court, but we know obviously this is not the last stage and the last word on this issue, and we're, we're ready to go to the next stage. Almost simultaneously Friday, U.S. District Judge Thomas Rice in Washington state issued an injunction to protect the access of Mifepristone. President Biden's administration furiously responding, saying the drug's approval was well supported by science and that this challenge comes too late, vowing to preserve access to the drug. Every option is on the table. The Justice Department immediately filing their appeal to the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals, which is set to weigh in this week. This is not America. What you saw by that one judge in that one court in that one state, that's not America. 
At least 13 states have mostly banned the use of the abortion pill. But if Kazmarek's ruling stands, Americans in states where abortion is legal also wouldn't have access to the medication. President Biden warning this is the next big step toward the national ban on abortion that Republican elected officials have vowed to make law in America. Leading medical organizations have condemned the Texas ruling to say the FDA-approved abortion pill is safe. And the Health and Human Services Secretary also warns the judge's decision could impact the FDA approval process for all drugs, from insulin to vaccines. M1, ABC News, Washington. In New Jersey, a religious leader is recovering after being attacked during a prayer service. The suspect is in custody, but so far the motive is unclear. Happening during early morning prayers at a mosque in Patterson, New Jersey. We're told the suspect allegedly stabbed the victim twice. People in the mosque were able to stop the suspect. They followed him as he attempted to exit the mosque and they um, were able to to um, to bring him down and apprehend him and hold him until Patterson police and Passaic County Sheriff Departments arrived and arrested him. This is the holiest month in the Islamic calendar year and we want to make sure that the safety of those that are just coming to pray is a priority for us and that we take this situation very seriously. This is believed to be an isolated incident, but local authorities have increased security at mosques in the area. Authorities in Arkansas say they recovered the bodies of a father and his son after they were missing during a kayaking trip. Now, they disappeared nearly a month ago while kayaking on Beaver Lake. That is the northwest section of the state. Boats and search dogs were called into that search for the men, but they were not found until yesterday. The sheriff's office in Benton County shared the news on their Facebook page. Classes at Rutgers University will be held today, even though thousands of professors may stay home. Three unions representing 9,000 educators, researchers, and clinicians voted to strike today. The unions are still trying to work out a new contract with the university. Nearly 70,000 students attend Rutgers, and a portion of the student body is just weeks away from graduation. The New Jersey governor is hoping to meet with both sides today in the hopes of reaching an agreement. 437, 61 degrees. Tick-related illnesses are on the rise and still to come what you need to know to keep your family safe. Plus Easter underwater after the break, how some divers got to have a little fun, all for a good cause. Quick check of the roads with Trans Sky the day after Easter. Things looking quiet on I-10 at West Avenue. And we haven't seen too many problems at this hour, but we will be checking in the next half hour with RJ Marcus, who is in for Stephen Cavazos. And outside with live cam this morning. Yeah, watch for a sprinkler too. I saw a few drops on the windshield this morning on my way into work. You're watching GMSA. 440, check this out. It's a scuba Easter bunny hiding real hard boiled eggs in the waters off of Key Largo, Florida. Yesterday, divers and snorkelers were able to look for them during a fun Easter egg hunt. It took place in the Florida Keys National Marine Sanctuary, one of the largest marine protected areas in the U.S. The underwater Easter egg hunt raises money for children in need as well as marine conservation. And over in Chile, animals at the zoo in Santiago hunted for colorful eggs filled with yummy treats. Red pandas, snow leopards, and lemurs all got a special treat at the largest private zoo in Chile. Now, the Easter eggs were from ostriches and collected throughout the year. They were filled with those yummy treats. 441, 61 degrees. Coming up later this morning on GMA, it's all about easing into your Monday with a new trend called Bare Minimum Mondays. I'm very familiar with hustle culture and the grind and doing everything all the time. So to have a mindset, to have a, a system to kind of give yourself a little bit of a break, um, I really resonated with that. We're going to hear from some people doing the bare minimum today. That's on GMA beginning at 7. And after the break, an Idaho mother is heading to trial almost three years after her arrest on charges of killing her two children. What we're learning about the case against Lori Vallow Daybell. In this morning's GMA First Look, Lori Vallow Daybell, charged with killing her two children, 7-year-old JJ and 17-year-old Ty Lee, will stand before a jury. Vallow Daybell also on trial for a third murder for the killing of her husband, Chad's previous wife, Tammy. A separate trial will be held for her husband and children's stepfather, Chad Daybell, who is also accused in the murders. Prosecutors alleged all three murders were part of the couple's doomsday plot. Sir, can you tell me where your kids are, Chad and Lori? 
In divorce papers, Vallow's ex-husband Charles said Lori believed she was a godlike figure who called the children zombies. Ever since she's been involved in this doomsday cult, that is not the same Lori. If convicted, Vallow could face life in prison without parole. And coming up at 7 a.m., Dan Abrams is here to talk about the trial. With your GMA First Look, I'm Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. Now to your morning medical news, and for much of the U.S., tick season is already starting. This year, there's a new warning about a rise in reported cases of a disease ticks can spread. CNN's Mandy Gaither takes a closer look at what you can do to protect yourself and your family. As the weather gets warmer, ticks get more active. There are a lot of diseases that ticks can transmit to humans and to pets. One emerging tick-borne disease is called babesiosis. It's usually caused by a parasite, says Dr. Bobby Pritt with Mayo Clinic. This parasite lives in your red blood cells and can cause quite a serious, even fatal infection. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention say between 2011 and 2019, there was a significant rise in the number of cases reported in the U.S., primarily in the Northeast and Midwest. Severity of symptoms varies, but tends to be flu-like and can include fever, chills, sweating, loss of appetite, nausea, and fatigue. If you're immunocompromised or don't have a functioning spleen, disease can become quite serious and can even result in death. To protect yourself, practice the ABCs. A, avoid. Stay away from tall grasses and other areas in the woods where ticks are found. B, bug spray. The CDC recommends one containing DEET or picaridin, among other active ingredients. And C, cover up. Clothing can protect against bites. And last but not least, when you come inside, make sure you check yourself, your children, your family members, and your pets for ticks and remove them as soon as you find them. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. And let's check the roads out there with TransSky looking over at I-10 at West Avenue. Things uh, have been looking pretty good for the most part. Uh, what we don't see is there's debris reported on the road at 151 at Petranco Road eastbound lanes. So just be aware of that. And Mike is back. Yes, sir. No, I was going to say, you said you would. Uh, thank you for the uh, greeting yes, or welcome. the welcome back. So, <laughs> Oh, you're welcome. Um, you said you saw some sprinkles. Just a few. Just a few this morning. No, yeah. not no nothing. So, yeah. mm -hmm. And actually, I saw the, the moon out there a little bit this morning. Really? A couple of holes in the clouds. But don't count on a bunch of that because we do have a few more uh, showers that are going to be showing up around here. First of all, yesterday, boy, what a beautiful. I love that. That caption it looks like the, uh, the sunset is on fire right there up there around Balverde. Thank you very much for that uh, that picture. Didn't see a whole lot of sunshine around here yesterday. Just a little hints of it here and there. And we got plenty of clouds over there by the airport right now. And also just a couple of uh, little sprinkly showers. Not really a heck of a lot. And a lot of this may be too light to be picked up on radar. Like Mark said, he saw just a, a couple of them. And we've got a few of them here on the uh, far northwest side of Bear County. Just kind of moving in Ward, probably Helotus right now over there toward Leon Valley. Again, just a, a couple of these and then a few more out in portions of the hill country sort of scattered about in portions of Bandera County and then further on out to the uh, the west and also notice how there are a couple of lightning strikes. Not a lot, but just a couple of lightning strikes that are being detected with this. So there is the chance for one or two uh, Claps of thunder here and there, but that's going to be sort of the the exception rather than the rule. Temperatures right now are still about Anywhere from uh, three, five degrees above normal, upper 50s, 57 is the normal low temperature, so we're slightly above that. But it's almost kind of a, a dampish cool. There's plenty of humidity out there. It's not like it's you know pushing back when you walk out the back door. But and and we're mostly below 60 for dew point temperatures. But it's just kind of right on that that cusp of being kind of humid out there this morning. Now we've got the 20, 30 percent chance for a couple of showers around here. Temperatures are going to be staying steady throughout the rest of the morning, and one or two claps of uh, of thunder out. Out there with a few lightning strikes here and there. We're going to make it up to 70 today at noon and then top off at 74. So we are going to be again four, three, four, five degrees below the normal high temperature, which is upper 70s right now. And it's not going to be raining constantly, but that 30, almost 40 percent chance for a couple of showers. And this is what computer model is indicating this morning. A couple of those showers out there. 
and then basically just a lot of clouds throughout the day. Peak or two of sunshine here and there and a few more of the showers. A couple of thunderstorms trying to show up later on this afternoon going in toward this evening. Not a huge rain event. It's not going to be a repeat of what we had late last week, but at least we're going to have just a couple of showers out there and the clouds are going to help to hold temperatures down. And speaking of the rest of the week, pretty much starting well with today in through the end of the week, we're going to be averaging right about normal much much more below normal today tomorrow a little bit warmer but there you know upper 70s low 80s all the way through the end of the week then we start to warm up on Saturday that's going to be the hot day of 84 degrees and as far as low temperatures again those are going to be held in check as well the the normal average is 57 degrees so we're going to be staying right around mid upper 50s through most of the week and then Saturday morning that's the day we peak a little bit as the next front's going to be approaching here on Sunday which is going to knock temperatures down somewhat pull in a little bit drier air Another chance of a couple of showers or even a thunderstorm uh, later Saturday and then going into uh, the wee hours Sunday morning. So today that number is not I'm going to jump ahead here and we're going to go to the 70 forecast 74 degrees for a high today, which again, a couple of degrees below normal. One or two of those showers or thunderstorm out there and tomorrow we will be to up to 75, so still not anything off the charts. Same thing pretty much the rest of the week. Yes, we will get in the low 80s by Thursday, Friday, and then heat up on Saturday and a couple of showers, a couple of thunderstorms. There's going to be that front moving on through, and that's going to knock temperatures down just a bit by Sunday and get rid of some of the humidity as well. But And, and again, even the humidity this week, it's going to be there, but not like it's going to be just in your face. Well, that's an yeah. improvement for yeah. humidity. So nothing extreme this week. Okay, we can handle that. Thank you, Mike. Mm -hmm. 451, 61 degrees. And just ahead, the new movie breaking records at the box office. And here are your lottery numbers. Pick three, four, five, one, Fireball nine. Your daily four numbers, five, three, one, three, Fireball five. Cash five, three, 12, 13, 27, 35. And Lotto, Texas, six, 10, 11, 23, 27, 33. And your Powerball numbers, 11, 22, 24, 51, 60, Powerball 18, Power Play 3. Good luck. We will destroy the Mushroom Kingdom! The Super Mario Brothers movie has posted the biggest global opening in history for an animated film, surpassing Frozen 2 with $377 million since Wednesday. Yeah. 204.6 million of that is domestic earnings, nearly 80 million more than it was expected to make. What's the plan? We build a shoe line around just him. Opening strong, but with nowhere near those numbers, is Ben Affleck's Air Jordan movie Air, a 20.2 million five day bow there. Neither party has officially confirmed it, but Taylor Swift and British actor Joe Alwyn have reportedly split after six years as a couple. Lover. The title track of Swift's 2019 album Lover was reportedly inspired by their relationship. A brush with death works wonders. Fox has canceled the medical drama The Resident. Falling audience numbers the likely reason. The show wrapped its sixth season in January. Can I get a hallelujah? And country star Marin Morris is 33 Monday. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Christopher Watson, ABC News. Just about 456 and 61 degrees. Ahead in our next half hour, a shortage of workers in emergency medical services. We're going to tell you about the new classes that could make a big difference. And checking the roads with our friends at TransSky, taking a look at I-10 at West Avenue. No problems to report there. RJ Marquez is in for Stephen Cavazos on this Monday after Easter. We'll be right back. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. As we look outside with live cam, we've got some clouds around. Mike says we might see a shower or storm today. We'll see how radar is looking at this hour as we approach 5 a.m. Good morning, everybody. It's Monday, April 10th. Thanks for joining us. Hope you had a wonderful Easter weekend. And, you know, this week doesn't look too bad as far as the weather. And at least uh, there was not a big rain out yesterday. That's true. We had quite a few clouds around. How are we looking this morning, Mike? Well, we do have a couple of showers around. You said you saw just a few little sprinkles coming into work this morning. I didn't see anything out there. As a matter of fact, I saw a little bit of the moon, so we don't have a complete cloud cover. But we do have a few more showers that are showing up on radar. I'm going to show you that in just a moment. 61 degrees right now. And the dew point, 
is at 58. So we do have relatively high humidity. It's up to 90%, but it's not as though it's that, you know, kind of uh, wet towel sort of humidity at all. You can sort of feel it. And it's kind of a dampish cool out there. So grab a light jacket. Plus you need it just because we're going to have a few sprinkles around here, not only this morning, but also later on today. We're not going to be overly hot today. 74 for a high temperature. So just a couple of degrees below normal and then plenty of clouds, obviously, and a couple of showers out there. The aquifer uh, yesterday's reading went up four tenths of a foot, which is obviously some very good news. Mold is on the high side, as is oak at 1,070. Okay, take a look at radar right now. And again, there's not a lot showing up, but you know, just enough to where you're going to have some uh, damp roads here and there this morning. Not really a, a lot of rain, and most of it is well. I want to say most of it is concentrated in parts of the hill country, what there is out there in parts of the uh, the hill country. And as you can see right here in town, we've got just a couple of these showers there. If you're coming in on 10, you're going to run into just a couple of them from uh, Bernie down in toward uh, 1604 and 410. And then right here on the near northwest side of town, we've got a couple of more of these just uh, light little showers around here. Then further out to the north and west, a couple of more of these showers and they're extended all the way out in toward Junction and then Valverde County. And you can see there's been a couple of lightning strikes here and there. Not a lot, but just one or two thunderstorms are going to be uh, kind of mixed in with some of the scattered showers, not only this morning, but also later on today. Mid to upper 50s, low 60s. We are... Oh, anywhere from about four or five degrees above the normal low temperature, which is uh, 57 right now. So kind of coolish, a couple of showers, maybe a storm uh, this morning. And then later on today, a few scattered showers, a couple of storms thrown in mid 70s. So temperatures are going to, thanks to the cloud cover, stay a few degrees below normal midweek tomorrow. And then all the way through Thursday, a little bit more in the way of some sunshine, upper 70s, mid 50s. So we're going to be close to normal with temperatures. Nothing too extreme this week, nor will the humidity be too extreme. Then we go into the weekend. We start to get into the low 80s, low mid 80s on Saturday, a couple of showers and storms as the next front moves on through here to trim off that humidity by Sunday. More on the forecast, all the details coming up. Traffic Authority, Mr. Marquez. Good morning, sir. What's going on? Yeah, good morning. Uh, glad to be with you guys to start your work week off here. Hopefully everyone there had a great Easter spending time with some family and friends. And maybe that's the reason why we're not seeing too much action on the roads right now. Now, been pretty quiet so far as we take a look at food, Loop 410 and Old Pearsall Road, I-37 at Indian Hills. Things looking pretty good in that area. I-10 at the Y. You can see our cameras kind of rotating there uh, a little bit quicker uh, than usual. I-10 at West Avenue. No traffic in sight right there, so that is good news if you're planning to head out to any time in the near future in the next 10-15 uh, minutes or so. As we take a look at our maps here, and again, a lot of green on the screen here. Traffic moving along pretty smooth in our area. We know that things are probably going to pick up. Maybe some people getting a little bit later start after the holiday weekend. Do want to remind you guys about some demolition work taking place on the northeast side. So this is taking place through the month of April. So just kind of keep this in mind if you're headed out into these areas. Loop 1604 eastbound to the westbound turnaround closure there at Lookout Road. So again, the northeast side, uh, some demolition work that we got to keep in mind of if we are heading out throughout the rest of the month. This is taking place through May the 1st. But one more quick look here at Trans Guide Traffic Cameras. If we take a look here, Again, the northeast side, Loop 1604 at Pat Booker Road. Things looking good. Loop 410, Jackson Keller. Nothing, nothing major to uh, notify you guys about, but I will continue to follow the roadways, see how things look on this Monday morning. Mark and Stephanie, back to you guys. Thank you, RJ. Near Longview, a woman is recovering after sheriff's deputies say she was found alive in a vehicle underwater. This happened at a lake at about 40 miles south of Longview. Marion County Sheriff deputies say the woman had been listed as missing. A fisherman first called investigators when he noticed a black Jeep underwater about 40 feet away from a boat <coughs> ramp. The woman was taken to the hospital. No word on her <coughs> condition. The Atascosa County uh, Sheriff is, uh, rather, the Atascosa County is warning loss of their former sheriff. Sheriff Tommy Williams passed away Saturday evening, as according to a post from the current sheriff on social media. In a statement they wrote, in part, quote, if you ever met him, you rem he remembered you. He was a friend to all, a fantastic politician, a true public servant, a great sheriff, father, husband, and boss. According to the post, Williams served as sheriff from 1973 to 2012. He passed away after a lengthy illness.
Now to the Pentagon assessing the damage after the leak of highly sensitive intelligence documents. Documents appear to reveal information about U.S. allies, including South Korea and Israel. They also appear to include details about the condition of Ukraine's air defense systems crucial for the war against Russia. ABC's Rhiannon Alley takes a closer look at some of the biggest concerns. This morning, the Justice Department is scrambling to find the source of what appears to be a major leak of U.S. intelligence documents. We are talking about documents that are labeled top secret, and that's as high as you can go when it comes to U.S. intelligence. ABC News has reviewed more than 30 pages of the highly classified material posted online containing what appears to be U.S. intelligence about the war in Ukraine, Russia, Iran's nuclear program, North Korea's missile program, China, and other countries. The files also allegedly show the U.S. was not only spying on adversaries, but also allies. There's a potential for damaging of U.S. relationships with some of our allies because some of this information could only have been gleaned if the United States was spying on senior leaders. And this headline in the Washington Post saying the files provide details about the near downing of a British spy plane near Ukraine last year. When do you actually put this into a newspaper or a television broadcast? Uh, but we've reached a point where these things have proliferated through Telegram, Twitter. Some documents appear to be from March 1st, showing how the U.S. and NATO were helping Ukraine. Details about casualty numbers, training schedules and weapons deliveries, and a map of the key battle raging in a city in eastern Ukraine. In at least one instance, the documents appear to be altered to favor Russia's point of view. In a statement about the leak last night, the Pentagon said its highest priority is the defense of our nation and our national security. We have referred this matter to the Department of Justice, which has opened a criminal investigation. Analysts say this could be the worst intelligence leak since Edward Snowden. But in this case, the documents appear to be more timely. The fact that these documents are out in the open and, and if they were posted close to when they were published, that makes it really scary for operational security. Rihanna Alley, ABC News, New York. The Environmental Protection Agency is expected to take steps in the coming days to tighten restrictions on emission standards. The proposed rule changes, if implemented, would require two-thirds of all new passenger vehicles sold in the U.S. to be electric by 2032. The New York Times was the first to report on the agency's proposal. The federal government isn't the only one trying to make changes. California regulators voted last year to ban the sale of new gasoline-powered cars by 2035 and set interim targets to phase these cars out. 507, 61 degrees. And still to come, Tesla is planning to open a new mega factory in China. Details ahead in your morning consumer news. And much of it was destroyed by flames. After the break, a look at the restoration of the iconic Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris. Let's look out there with live cam. No rain in this shot. We're at 61 degrees, but we will talk to Mike later about your rain chances today and throughout the week. And welcome back. It's about 510. Now to a closer look at the restoration of the iconic Notre Dame Cathedral. The landmark is scheduled to reopen to the public in Paris next year. That's five years after a devastating fire caused severe damage to the historic landmark. And while much care and effort and money is being used to make sure the reconstructed Notre Dame is just like the old one, some of the workers say they are amazed at how they could have done all this 1,000 years ago. More than 30 Ukrainian children were reunited with their families over the weekend. This comes after a long rescue operation to bring them back home from Russia and Russian-occupied Crimea. They had been taken from areas of Ukraine occupied by Russian forces. Time now is 511 and 61 degrees for now. This morning there's a new warning about your vehicle and burglars. After the break, how experts say thieves are now getting inside. I'm your overly competitive brother. Check. Psych. <laughs> and I'm about to steal this game from you. Just like I stole Kelly Carter in high school, huh? You got no game. Dude, that's a foul. And now you're ready to settle a score. Game over. <laughs> And if you don't have the right home insurance coverage, well, you can end up paying for all this yourself. So get all state and be better protected from mayhem. Yeah, like me. Thanks, bro. Take a lap, rookie. Real mature. Identical twins Bethany and Stephanie both struggled with CPAP for their sleep apnea. But Stephanie got Inspire, an implanted device that works inside the body. There's no reason to keep struggling. Inspire. Learn more and view important safety information at inspiresleep.com. Cashback is good, but double cashback is even better. 
Discover matches all the cash back you've earned at the end of your first year, which is cash back at its best. In today's Tech Bites, Tesla's new mega factory, CEO Elon Musk says his company will open a new facility in Shanghai, China, where giant batteries called mega packs will be built. The batteries are the size of shipping containers and are meant to provide power when demand on a local grid is high. And YouTube has started rolling out a real-time lyrics feature similar to Spotify and other streaming services. The YouTube music version shows the current line highlighted on the screen. The feature is available to some users on both Android and iOS. And thieves are now using a new tool to hack into cars through their headlights. It's a $2,500 device. It's available online. Once it's plugged into the socket behind the headlight, it can open windows and unlock doors. Thieves are making off with Ferraris, Lamborghinis, even Toyotas, and it only takes them about 30 seconds. Those are your Tech bites. Have a great day. And Texas, like many states, still facing a shortage of workers in emergency medical services. As a way to encourage more people to join the field, Acadian Ambulance is offering a short 11-day course for emergency care attendant. Lee Wallman explains how the classes are paid, a paid way to get your foot in the door for EMS. More credentialed individuals that we have on the street means that there's more trucks on the on the street. We can get to um, our community a lot faster. There's people. Recruiter for Acadian Ambulance Christine Kerner says since the pandemic, there has been a nationwide problem with finding people to join the EMS field. The economy, the way that it is, I think that it's going to be a battle that we see for the near future, at least. In December, we told you about the Texas legislature setting aside 21.7 million for EMS education and retention as a part of Senate Bill 8 to help combat the shortage after our story aired. We had 19 candidates come in the door ready to go. Um, of those 19, 15 signed offer letters um, and have their tuition completely paid for. Joey Vela is currently in EMT classes with Acadian, benefiting from the state funding. Not only am I able to work, but able to get the days off to go to class, not have to put anything out of pocket. Before the EMT training, Vela took part in Acadian's Emergency Care Attendant or ECA course. It's a paid 11 day class that gets your foot in the door for emergency medical services. Well, it's a building block to the next level of getting your EMT and then um, after EMT, then your paramedic. Acadian pays ECA participants hourly. And then when you complete the course and want to continue on to an EMT class, your EMT training will be paid for as well. If you're not sure about EMS, you're kind of on the fence about EMS, um, this is a great stepping stone into that, um, or just the medical field in general. The next ECA class for Acadians starts on May 5th. You'll need to be registered by mid-April. On our website, ksat.com, we have all of the information on how you can sign up for that class. Back to you. Thank you, Lee. 517, how are we looking out there, RJ? Yeah, things looking pretty good so far to start your work week, guys. Mm -hmm. As we mentioned, maybe some people spending time, uh, you know, Easter with family and friends. So maybe stayed out a little bit later than usual. But uh, overall, things looking pretty good in our area. As we take a look at TransGuy traffic cameras so far, 1604 at Wiseman Boulevard. Traffic moved along pretty smooth. One lone car just cruising along there. 1604 at Pat Booker in the northeast side. Things looking pretty good in that area as well. Uh, let's take a look at our maps and see what we have going on today on your Monday morning. Uh, again, a lot of green here, so traffic flow moving pretty good in our area. Did want to uh, notify you guys about one thing that is going on here. This is a stall that's being reported right now on the eastbound lanes of I-10 at ProBent. So uh, you can see it's a little bit, so ProBent's actually right here, uh, but our maps are showing that it's a little bit closer to where we have 90 intersect with 35 and I-10. So anyone that's familiar with that area knows that it gets very busy there. Uh, uh, you know, throughout the morning. So this is something that we will continue to monitor as we make our way throughout our Monday. But again, things looking pretty good out there so far. I-35 at Ben Ziegelman Road, traffic moving along pretty good. Right now might be a good time if you wanna go get an early breakfast, maybe get some uh, coffee. I'm trying to load up on some right now to kind of get my <laughs> week going here. So 35 San Marcos, things looking good in that area. How are things looking outside, Mike? Actually, a couple of sprinkles here. They're going to show you that in a second. First of all, got some great pictures from Easter, and there's Viper. I don't know what's better, the picture or the name of the dog, and that just fits that pug, Viper the pug, out there. 
Looks like yeah. just name. I for know. Such a little I know. <laughs> pup. But I like that he's by the colorful Easter eggs. Yes. And, and got a tuxedo on as well. Yeah. So anyway, thank you so much for the uh, KSAC Connect picture. And all right, we've got uh, a lot of clouds hanging around here right now. I did see the moon a little bit this morning when I was walking outside, so it wasn't a complete cloud cover. But then on the flip side of that, we also have a few of these light little showers that are showing up. Uh, Mark said he saw a couple of sprinkles earlier this morning coming into work. I didn't see anything out there. Some of it may be in the form of a little bit of mist or uh, some drizzle and then just these few again little showers. There are a couple of them down right here right about uh, where RJ was just talking about with that uh, minor incident there that stalled vehicle right along 90 and then also further up to the uh, northwest coming across 90 that moved across 10 and is heading in toward 281 as of right now just a couple of light little showers and then elsewhere further out into portions of the uh, hill country. We do have a few more of these scattered showers. There's not a lot out there. I mean, you know, it's just kind of few and far between at best, but also we have seen a couple of lightning strikes up here around junction. There's just a few of them and there have been. Well, let me go back over here. There have been a few of them there in Val Verde County. Not a lot, but again, don't be surprised if you uh, hear a couple of claps of thunder throughout the course of the day. Just one or two of these scattered around. Temperatures are in the upper 50s, low 60s right now. They're not going to be moving throughout the rest of the morning. We will have mostly to just plain old cloudy skies and still that chance for some rain. It's not going to be raining constantly nor everywhere, but just a few of those showers, a couple of scattered showers and thunderstorms later on today. High temperature makes it up to uh, 74 degrees. And again, computer models are uh, pretty good with showing that it's not going to be raining constantly out there. Just a few uh, scattered showers. This one's not really bullish on the morning rain, but there obviously is some out there and then a few more popping up later on this afternoon around dinner time and even a few lingering on into the uh, evening hours. Now, as far as the humidity, it's yes, it did start to get a little more humid yesterday than especially what it was on Saturday. Uh, not oppressively humid, and that's going to be the situation throughout the day. Yes, there will be enough out there, and that's why it's kind of a dampish cool this morning with that relatively high humidity, and that'll be the situation going into tomorrow morning as well. But we do have primarily a northeasterly breeze, and that is going to Keep it somewhat on the, the comfortable side as we go into the next uh, few days. So not anything too extreme as far as the temperatures, as far as the humidity, and as far as the rain. I mean, just a couple of showers out there, but not nowhere near as much as what we had last week, which was just beautiful rain last week. 70 today at noon, a couple of showers, a couple of thunderstorms just scattered about the area, and then 74 high temperatures. So we are going to be just a few degrees below normal with, again, a few scattered showers, a couple of thunderstorms, here and there. Then you go into the next seven days and after today, kind of a uh, just a sort of a tranquil period. Nothing to write home about normal temperatures for the most part. Some sunshine, a few morning clouds out there. We do heat up somewhat on Friday, maybe a couple of showers late Friday and then Saturday. Pretty hot and humid mid 80s and look at that low temperature 66 means there's a bunch of humidity out there, but another front's going to move through. And that's going to clear us out then for Sunday, but we will have a few showers and thunderstorms, especially later in the day on Saturday. I keep changing heat to a air, heat, air, eat, hair, heat, hair. Yep. Uh, hair, not hair. That's not a setting. <laughs> I was just thinking, I was like, that sounds like hair. Yeah. Like, on a hair dryer. Yeah. Be, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it kind of goes, goes back and forth here and there. If it stays right in the middle like it is this week, then it's like, ooh, good. Mm -hmm. Electricity bills be a little bit lower. So, okay. Yeah, we can handle uh, that. Yeah. I'm turning the hair setting off. 522, 61 degrees. <laughs> just ahead, Timothy Chalamet is adding singing to his list of talents in the upcoming Bob Dylan biopic. That's next in your Spotlight News. Timothy Chalamet is going all in on Bob Dylan. The Dune and Wonka star is set to play the iconic singer-songwriter in a new biopic, and director James Mangold tells Collider Chalamet will do his own singing for the role. Filming is expected to start this August. I won't be satisfied unless this album is an accurate representation of where I am as a person. And know how he gets when he makes records, whether or not he sees it at the time or not. Singer-songwriter Jason Isbell lays bare his professional and personal life alongside his wife, musician Amanda Shires, in a new documentary. It made me feel some pressure, but at the same time, I just tried to remember how much I love watching other people do that. And, and you know, I grew up watching documentaries where people were making records, and the more information I could get, the more exciting it was for me. Jason Isbell running with 
with our eyes closed is now on HBO and HBO Max. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Time check, 526, 61 degrees. And let's look at your winning lotto numbers. We have pick three, four, five, one, fireball nine, daily four, five, three, one, three, fireball five. Cash five numbers three, 12, 13, 27, 35, lotto Texas, 6, 10, 11, 23, 27, and 33. And Powerball, let me check the jackpot, $192 million. This number's 11, 22, 24, 51, 60, Powerball 18, Power Play 3. Right now, 5.30, the political firestorm is still heating up in Tennessee as two expelled Democratic lawmakers fight to regain their seats. And let's look out there with live cam. Hope you had a great Easter this morning. We're in the 60s, not too bad out there at all. Good morning, rise and shine, everybody. It's Monday, April 10th. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, I hope you had a good weekend. Uh, I know, well, for some people, like mostly for me, I feel like it worked out because it wasn't too hot, too sunny no. on Easter Sunday. Yeah, I mean, we did have a lot of clouds, so it wasn't the prettiest of days, but I think that helped out because the humidity started to try and creep into the picture a little bit mm, yesterday afternoon. We've got some out there right now. It's almost kind of that, that as I could describe it, dampish cool. Yes, we are upper 50s, low 60s right now, but with all that humidity, it, it just kind of makes it feel a little bit cooler when you step outside. Plenty of clouds out there. I did see a couple of breaks earlier this morning, a little bit of the uh, the moon out there as well. 61 degrees, dew point stands at 58. So we're kind of on that cusp of 60 degrees is when you really start to feel the humidity. But again, when you have this much moisture in the atmosphere, you know, there's only three degrees difference between the temperature and the dew point temperature. Uh, that's when, yeah, it does kind of feel coolish out. Out there so grab a light jacket and you need that also for the fact that we do have a few showers now there are a couple of them out here in portions of Alverde County and then further on up to the north and there have been not anything right now but as you can see just a couple of lightning strikes that have been showing up with some of those so don't be surprised if there are a few uh, lightning strikes out there a couple of uh, claps of thunder here and there even throughout the course of the afternoon a couple of more of these light showers here in portions of uh, Bandera County right there in and, well, there were a few right around Medina Lake, and then we've got a couple of them that are moving right across San Antonio. So just watch out for a couple of uh, spots of damp roads here and there, and there's a lot of mist out there as well. Nothing too heavy, but again, just enough to make things just slick enough. So mid upper 50s, low 60s around here. Temperatures are anywhere from about three to five degrees above their respective normal low temperatures. Should be at 57 here in town. Both mold and oak are on the high side. The update account is going to be coming out, obviously, in a couple of hours. 70 today at noon, 74 high temperatures. So not a huge span in temperatures today. We are going to stay a couple of degrees below normal. Just a few scattered showers, a couple of thunderstorms out there. Not raining constantly, not everywhere, but just one or two of them. And then sort of a, a tranquil week ahead. Most of the week ahead is going to be on the tranquil side. We'll talk about that coming up in just a couple of minutes and a look ahead to the weekend. Traffic Authority, RJ, what's going on, sir? Yeah, Mike, things looking good so far right now. You mentioned a little bit of slick roads out there potentially, but uh, traffic looking pretty good in our area at the moment as we get started with our 530 half hour here. Taking you outside with TransGuy traffic cameras, Loop 410 McCullough, things looking good there. US 98 Nogalitos out there in the near west side, things looking pretty good as traffic uh, starting to build up a little bit more as we've seen over the past uh, 30 minutes or so. Uh, one thing to kind of let you guys know about, we're still continuing to monitor this stall here. That's being reported on the uh, little bit the south southwest side. So again, it's being reported by TxDOT over here on uh, I-10 and Proben on the eastbound lanes. But our maps are showing that it's a little bit closer to where we have this uh, very busy intersection. 90, uh, 35 goes through there, and of course this uh, becomes I-10 in this area right here. So something to keep in mind. But uh, I was taking a look at our. Transguide traffic cameras and I'll show you guys here in just a little bit. It does not appear to be causing any major delays or significant backup as we can see from our traffic flow. So let's go ahead and show you what that actually looks like outside right now. And again, I-10 Provent, things looking pretty good in this area right now. Nothing uh, to note or nothing major, but again, uh, right now text out re reporting that this is off to the shoulder. So things looking pretty good in this area, something we will continue to monitor throughout the rest of the morning, including uh, the rest of your roadways. Mark and Stephanie, back to you guys. Thank you, RJ. 
Top story this morning, a lot of questions remain after four major crashes on the west side of town. This happened yesterday afternoon and we're told that the driver in a silver pickup truck crashed into a utility pole at the corner of Seralvo and General McMullen. The entire block was without power, but CPS Energy restored it quickly. One person was arrested and we're told that park police are handling this case. Now to the political battle in one state exploding into a nationwide debate. It concerns two lawmakers in Tennessee expelled from the state house, accused of breaking the rules during a protest about gun laws. As ABC's Andrew Dimbert reports, they could get their old jobs back, at least temporarily. Today, one of the ousted state lawmakers in Tennessee, accused of disorderly behavior during a gun reform protest, could learn whether he'll be sworn back into office. That's because vacancies at the state house can be filled on an interim basis by local leaders until a special election is held. They're speaking out. They're speaking out on some serious issues and they deserve to be heard. Um, this is democracy. Nashville's mayor is holding a special council meeting today to possibly vote on allowing state representative Justin Jones to fill his own vacant seat. It's not over. That we are a resurrection people. Jones attended Easter Mass in Nashville. Church leaders want him sent back to the state house. There are people who don't have anyone to do their constituent affairs anymore. We definitely have unfinished business. Jones was expelled along with Democratic State Representative Justin Pearson after leading protesters on the Tennessee House floor pushing for tougher gun laws in response to last month's deadly school shooting in Nashville. This is one of the greatest tactics of voter disenfranchisement and voter oppression that I have ever witnessed. Republicans are pushing back against accusations of racism after a white Democrat, Gloria Johnson, survived expulsion. She stood with Pearson and Jones as the two used a bullhorn during the protest. They disrupted the function, started mobilizing and shouting and creating chaos within the uh, House of Representatives to the point that business could not be conducted. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. I got this video out of Washington. This is a fishing ship that's been on fire for more than 40 hours. It's at a pier near Seattle. The shelter in place has been issued while it burns. There are concerns about possible health related issues down the road. In Hawaii, people are being warned to stay out of the water today after a 58 year old man was attacked by a eight foot tiger shark. It happened yesterday morning. The man's friend says the shark bit off most of his friend's right leg, leaving him in critical condition. Lifeguards alerted another surfer and a few others to quickly get out of the water. I think it's, uh, you know, it's nature. It's, uh, you know, it's unavoidable and I, I don't think they mean it. Um, but obviously be, you know, be out in the water by your own caution, uh, at your own cautious um, and, you know, follow the lifeguard because they know the, the best. Crews there say they will be patrolling that area. 537, 61 degrees. Inspiring change after the break, how one young man with autism is raising awareness and understanding on a big stage. Outside with live cam on the lookout for a shower or two, maybe a storm on this Monday after long Easter weekend. You're watching Good Morning San Antonio. Welcome back. It's 539 this morning. We are learning more about one young man's journey, taking him to a big moment at Yankee Stadium. Here's ABC's Lindsay Davis with his inspiring story. Tugging at all the heartstrings, Ethan Don sharing his joy of music before a packed Yankee Stadium. Ethan has autism, but he doesn't let that slow him down. He's been performing since he was six. Ethan's a performer. He loves being on stage. All that practice preparing the now 21 year old to play the national anthem on his biggest stage yet on World Autism Day this past week, much to the delight of the crowd. Ethan taking center stage on the field full of pride and courage. I feel brave. <laughs> His family overwhelmed as they watch with more nerves than Ethan. So I, I'm a nervous wreck. He's totally calm and in his element. And to him, this is where he can shine. Ethan loves sports and to perform. His talent's not limited to playing the violin, piano, and singing. He's been performing solos at restaurants and other sporting events. And tonight, Ethan's family has a message about why this moment is so much bigger than Ethan. It shows that children with autism can do more than people give them credit for. And, you know, I, I say Ethan may have autism, but autism does not have Ethan. 
and he's able to do amazing things. That was Lindsay Davis reporting. Time now, 541 and 61 degrees for now. We're about to head to Augusta after the break. Check in with the winner of the coveted green jacket at this year's Masters. A lot of us were watching this weekend. We turned out a golf's greatest tournament, the Masters, and a new champion. ABC's Andrew Denver shows us how an old champion and an amateur nearly stole the spotlight. Rom wins the Masters Marathon. John Rom has become the fourth Spaniard in history to win a green jacket at Golf's Cathedral, Augusta National. His wife and young son looking on. The weekend marred by bad weather. At one point, these trees tumbling down, nearly falling on fans. The weather prompting several delays. When the third round was suspended Saturday, it was Brooks Kepka from the controversial Saudi-backed Live Golf Tour on top. But when play resumed, John Rahm came roaring back, erasing a four-shot deficit to take the lead over Kepka. There's some days you have it, some days you don't, and today just wasn't one of those. Now a two-time major champion, Rahm captured his first coveted green jacket. It was an incredible Sunday. Too, too bad Brooks didn't have his best, but we still battled out there. Tiger Woods withdrawing due to injury, visibly laboring on the course two years after the car crash that nearly took his leg. There's no debate that this is the twilight of Tiger's career, but again, at this point, He's just gra grateful to be able to compete. Who knows what his tournament future holds? Ascending to fan favorite, amateur Sam Bennett, the first amateur to finish in the top 20 since 2005. Still a student athlete, Bennett cannot collect prize money from Augusta, which would have been around $300,000 for his 16th place finish. And in his next scheduled tournament, he'll have to carry his own clubs. A humbling run for the senior from Texas A&M. You know, walking up 18 was by far the coolest experience of my life. The Masters and Augusta was everything I ever dreamed of. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. And trending right now on KSET.com, Texas State Park officials say they may have figured out what kind of mystery creature was spotted lurking around at night in the Rio Grande Valley area. This comes after an image of the creature captured some attention on social media last week. Officials with Benson Rio Grande Valley State Park in Mission say they think it's likely an American badger. You can check it out on our website at KSAT.com. We really didn't do you any favors with that video there. Right? I know, really we were trying to, to find it. But I saw it this morning, it looked like a badger to me as well. All right, new video into our newsroom from Brackenridge Park, where the Easter campers have come and gone. Curfew went into a back to effect last night at around 11 o'clock. And uh, there is some picking up to do, especially at the trash cans. But yeah. good news, we're hearing overall that the parks fared fairly well this year for the Easter weekend. That's good. We, we passed by a park, not this one. I think it was a Tom Slick Park on 151. Pretty crowded. A lot of people out yesterday. I believe it. I believe it. And we'll talk about your forecast in one second. Right now it's 547. Let's check back with RJ Marquez. Yeah, the Easter Company, definitely a San Antonio staple tradition. Good to see that people uh, had themselves a good Easter weekend, and hopefully they were picking up after themselves out there. And taking a look real quick outside Trans Guide traffic cameras, Loop 410 at Jackson Keller Road. Uh, things looking pretty good in that area there. Loop 410 at McCullough, things looking solid in that area there. If you are headed out in the next couple of minutes, right now would be a good time to go ahead and do that. Have a couple of things now that are showing up on our maps, and we've been following, of course, that stall right there. So let's go and show you out on the far west side and uh, they, so what happened here is I just put this icon there and then our maps just recognize what is going on out there in that area too so that's why this is just one stall being reported out there on the far north on the far west side sorry loop 1604 this is the northbound lanes at West Military Drive and uh, we already had construction taking place in some of those uh, in that area there on the east and westbound lanes of uh, West Military Drive but now we have this uh, taking place here in the northbound lanes of Loop 410. So uh, keep this in mind if you're headed out in this area. Right now, it doesn't seem to be appear, doesn't appear to be causing any major delays or any uh, backups in that area. Still following this stall out here on the eastbound lanes at um, I-10 and Probent. And um, kind of taking a little while for them to sort of clear out this area. This is right now being reported on the shoulder. So nothing major uh, as far as delays or backups in this area as well. As we take one more look outside, Trans Guide traffic cameras, Loop 410, Jackson Keller. We just saw that one a little while ago. So our cameras kind of cycling through, making their way as traffic guys starting to kind of pick up here as we get closer to our six o'clock hour.
All right, Mike's got a beautiful picture that reminds me yes. of Holland in the Netherlands oh, yeah, uh, this yeah. time of year. Very pretty. A beautiful Easter picture with the uh, tulip out there and uh, yeah, it's absolutely gorgeous. Not Holland. No. Lavernia. <laughs> <laughs> and look at that field of tulips, too. Gorgeous. Boy, that's pretty. Thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture. And if you have some good pictures of all of your uh, flowers, and uh, even if it's the rain later on today, please send them in. And as you can see, here we are over there at uh, 410 and I-10, looking off down, kind of down to the uh, south to southwest. You can see we do have plenty of clouds hanging around here. Not completely cloudy skies around the area, but uh, plenty of them. And also, as you can see, we've got a few showers that are starting to, uh, or have been showing up a couple of them down here on the southeast side right around uh, China Grove just there on 410 right to the south of uh, 35 and down around Palo Alto College. Then this little batch of rain has been working its way across Windcrest and this is heading out to 35. So if you're coming in 35 into town, you're going to have to uh, kind of be on the lookout for that. So it's not a lot of rain, uh, just a few little scattered showers that are being picked up as of right now. And then we do have a few more out in parts of the hill country. Just a couple of these little uh, scattered showers out there. And there's even been a few lightning strikes picked up. Nothing as of right now, but just as the day rolls on, don't be surprised if you hear a couple of claps of thunder here and there. But I think that's going to be the exception rather than the rule. Temperatures have been steady all morning long, upper 50s, low 60s. We are anywhere from about three to five degrees <coughs> above normal. The dew points measure moisture in the atmosphere are being held in check. 60 is that threshold number where you really start to feel the humidity. So we're on the verge of that. There's enough humidity out there that it's kind of a, a dampish cool this morning. So jacket's a pretty good idea. And actually compared to this time yesterday, yes, the humidity did go up. It started to go up a little bit throughout the afternoon. You could feel that in the afternoon yesterday. Today, temperatures are going to be holding steady all morning long and maybe fluctuating a degree or two. And that uh, chance for a couple of showers Maybe a thunderstorm thrown on in here. We'll make it up to 70 today at noon and then top off at 74. Normal highs in the upper 70s, so we're going to be approximately five below normal. Again, a couple of showers, a few thunderstorms scattered about here and there. Not a big deal today, but just a couple of them, which is pretty much what computer models are indicating. I mean, this one's not really bullish on rain this morning. Then a few more of those showers, especially popping up there in portions of the uh, hill country later on today. So this is just a uh, little bit of a disturbance in the big picture of things. You can see this is coming in here out of the hill country, but it's not uh, a huge storm complex by any stretch. So this will just kind of scooch on past here, give us a couple of showers and then upstream from there. There's really not that much going on. So we've got a, kind of a tranquil period coming on in here throughout the rest of the week. So here's this little bit of a low, which is in the vicinity. That's what's pulling some of these showers on through here, and that'll be the case throughout the rest of today. And then the high starts to uh, build on in here, but it's not really going to heat us up that much. We will be pretty close to normal readings. Upper 70s, low 80s throughout the uh, middle portion of the week. But as we get into the end of the week and this trough digs here, that's going to help to pull in more uh, warm air for Friday and then going into Saturday. Also, with the extra moisture around here, as a front moves on through with that low, that's going to touch off a couple of more showers and thunderstorms around here, especially late Saturday, Sunday. But then in behind that, that's going to pull down a nice little uh, break in some of the humidity for Sunday and the first part of then next week. 70 at noon today, a couple of showers, a couple of thunderstorms here and there. Uh, it's not going to, like I said, rain constantly, but just a few of them here and there. So don't be surprised. Just keep a jacket handy. 74 high temperature today. Again, a few scattered showers, a thunderstorm or two here or there and over the next uh, then three four days temperatures are going to be pretty close to normal readings upper 70s low temperatures right around mid upper 50s just about where they should be then we heat up uh, especially Friday and Saturday a lot more humidity around here which is evident with holding those low temperatures up there in the uh, mid 60s Saturday morning and as the front moves through then late in the day a couple of more showers and thunderstorms but then looks beautiful on Sunday yeah, we'll take that weekend weather Yeah, on Sunday. And a little bit more rain, so that's good news, too. No severe storms. No, no, nothing like that. Sounds great. It's planned 553, 61 degrees. Look at winning lotto numbers. We have pick three, four, five, one, fireball nine, daily four, five, three, one, three, fireball five. Cash five numbers, three, 12, 13, 27, 35. Lotto Texas jackpots at $63.75 million. 6, 10, 11, 23, 27, 33.
And Powerball, as I pull up that jackpot too, is up to $192 million. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, the latest on the leak of highly sensitive documents. The Justice Department launching an investigation as the Pentagon tries to contain the damage. And the showdown over the abortion pill after two federal judges issued conflicting rulings. Now, how future access hangs in the balance for the whole country. We'll have those stories and so much more right here on GMA. There's a darkness inside of me. Scream 6 passed the 100 million mark in domestic box office with a fifth place weekend worth $3.3 million. Air took the court in fourth place. The feel good flick about Nike signing Michael Jordan opened with a better than expected $14.47 million. Dungeons and Dragons Honor Among Thieves fell more than 60% in its sophomore weekend, landing in third place with $14.5 million. Bonjour, Monsieur Wick, and welcome to La Resistance. John Wick Chapter 4 is at 147 million domestic after a second place weekend worth $14.6 million. <laughs> the Super Mario Brothers movie scored big, earning $146.4 million Friday through Sunday and $204.6 million in its first five days, both better than any other film this year. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. 558, taking a quick look at Transguide, looking live at 410 McCullough. We'll be right back.